Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Eddie's Airbrush. So I don't know what's going on. I still don't know what how uh, Streamlabs work. Um, I had done a video earlier today, but uh, for some reason, um, I had to take it down because I could hear my old man and my brother talking in the back in the background, and I just tried to like. I don't I don't want to show that. Um anyways, um if you guys can see something, I won't be airbrushing, I won't be able to see the messages cuz uh, cuz I have my phone mounted on my on my phone. Hey, how's it going, Jacob? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I don't know how to say your name. Uh but anyway, just let's get ready to airbrush. Um So we're gonna we're gonna be uh, uh shading again, only cause um I have to do the shading, I have to do shading over. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys an example. Oh, on um some shading techniques, the way I got to learn, you know. Like I said, when you when you ready when you do your dagger strokes when you learn your dagger strokes and you you learn it going up from le left to right and right to left you know from down up up down then you want to get ready to to do some shading work you guys practice after you guys practice your dots and everything well shading is pretty much a dot you know it's a puffy dot it's a light dot just uh if you step you give yourself maybe a, a distance for where where when you're doing lines you get up close you know shading is the opposite you you you, you go away and you create this soft spray um, I got a buddy of mine named, who's that, is that even you? Jason, real fast, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, he asked me how to do his, uh, he did some flames. And he wants to shade them. He wants to add a drop shadow, I believe. You know? I don't know if you guys can see that. Well, he wants to do a drop shot. These are just rough. And um, shading, how I do my shading or how I add shading to the, the flames is pretty much a soft spray. Now, a soft spray is pretty much a double-ended stroke. Dun double taper uh, dagger stroke. See that? When this is this one starts from the right to left, this one's you're just gonna have to practice on that, figure it out. But the you gotta find your light source when doing flames, um, and that's gonna help you where to place the the shadows and stuff like that. So hold on one second. I'm spraying about maybe about 40 psi. If you guys have that, if you guys wondering, but pretty much it's a soft. Um, I'm I'm about what about seven eight inches away. It just depends, guys. And I'm pulling very slightly on the lever. You know what I mean. That would give it a nice and 
if you want to have drop drop shadow or a light source to the top of the, of the flames you want to add a very very lightly shadow on the bottom or should I say where I don't know exactly guys you're just gonna have to <laughs> you guys are just gonna have to look man because I I'm bad at explaining so yeah there goes that very lightly just have you guys ever like spray painted um anything with an aerosol you go in you kind of go in lightly and kind of like do this I don't know how to explain it like kind of like hmm yeah no I don't know about that just lightly you know pull away pulling away at the end if you don't pull away you know, let me you see where I'm at right here right here if you don't pull away you end up with with this little spot right there see that and that's what you're trying to avoid yeah no man it's it's uh it's it's just practice 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 you know dagger strokes are just pretty much practice once you get it down it's all about lettering see I believe I believe if you get if you go straight to the what you're trying to learn like lettering can teach you so much you know lettering can you know pretty pretty much teach you how to master Pretty much it. Learning can, here, let me move this. Can teach you a lot. You know, how to move the trigger in and out. But it starts out with the dagger stroke. It starts out with this. Or like, some people like to do the, um, here, let's move this a little bit. Some people like to do the palm tree. See that? It took me forever to figure that out. I haven't done one in a, in a while, so. Um. I think the dagger stroke, the dagger stroke, um, people think that it's just something that's just going to click in. But it's not. It's it's just gonna be practice, practice, practice. It's not me, guys. It's my old man. He's a uh, he's fixing something. You know what I mean? And then that puffy. I don't know, call it puffy line you know once you get that done you guys even see that let's see Jason, I'm doing this video for you, man. How you, how you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm teaching. I'm showing how to do the shading and um. Pretty much. Chain is nothing but a soft line. All you gotta do is just pull away. That's pretty much what it is, man. You know? Pretty much a, a thin line like this, but 
you're pulling away from the surface and it creates this soft line. So, um, it's just gonna, it's gonna come down to practice, you know? Nothing, nothing but practice and, um, um, it's best not to practice on your artwork. It's best if, you know, you just practice or, or warm up practice on the side. And, um, man, I'm just gonna pretend you guys didn't hear all those noises. Because, hopefully you didn't. See that? This is pretty much this line right there. Just from far away, from a distance. I don't know if you guys could see that. You can always use, you can always use shield. You can use your hand as a shield. See that? And pull away, pull away. You'll create shades. And tones and oh my my regular handwriting is horrible horrible man it is uh, oh my gosh you have no idea yeah my regular handwriting is all over the place uh, if you was if you were to see my letter you you won't believe it cuz I, I for some reason ever since I'm, I was a kid I've never had a set I've never said a type of a, uh, how can I say it? Like if I'm writing words, you'll see capitals in between there. You know what I mean? Lower cases everywhere. And it's just bad. It's bad. Um, I was going to talk about something else. And I just totally forgot, guys. But, but yeah, pretty much shading is just, just layering. You know, um, at 40 PSI, milk consistency, the paint is at milk, a milk consistency. Um, I'm using Aqua Flow, Jet Black. Um, what else? You guys have, I, I've, I've, I've thought of painting on cars, man, but, um, see where I stay, they complain too much about the solvents. You know, I know now you can use um, water-based paint. Now, just to let you know, these uh, Iwatas, they are for both water-based and um, solving your things. Um, the only thing you have to worry about is not using ammonia to clean your airbrushes. <laughs> no, man. That's why you gotta practice. You gotta, you gotta, you have to do some certain exercises. Let me see if I can um have a little space here and I can show you the exercises for lettering. So for when I first started, I had to practice these right here. So the point is to go heavy down and thin up, heavy down, thin up. Let me do it slower here. Or and bigger. So you get to see. Pretty much that. Thick down, thin up. And once you get that going, remember it has to be a continuous line. You don't stop. Or yeah, you don't stop spraying. You just you know. This is what I had to learn for many, many, many hours. That right there. Once I got done or got bored, I would have to do this. All right? That would be like the equivalent to an N or an M. You know? And then you do the swirls, the E. And then upside down. That would get you somewhere right there. You know? That's how you learn how to do a decent lettering. And you take it to the next level and the next level. Basic basic uh, handwriting will be 
something. Let me see. Um, basic lettering like that. Oh, you guys didn't see it. Ah, something like that. That'll be the, pretty much the basic. You can make money off of that. People will pay. You know. If you want to go elaborate, you want to go crazy, then you have to take it up a notch. And and it's not, it's not going to come down to practice, you know? This is paper. You're going to be airbrushing on shirts, you know? I don't know if you guys are still there, but, but yeah, uh, I'll be, um, uh, I'll, I'll continue airbrushing, maybe explain some other stuff. If you guys have a question or anything like that, please let me know. I know somebody was talking about lettering, my lettering and stuff. They want to see my lettering. Um, I, I learned this lettering. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. I learned this lettering based on many people, but first of all, my, my, my friends who had a shirt business, they took me in, they showed me the basics, you know what I mean? And it was up to me if I really wanted it, I had to learn, I had to crack some codes. That's how I call it, I call it cracking code. Um, cracking code means you see some, I see something, okay, I got to figure out how to, how they do that. And and um it's like a code to me it's like okay well um how do, how do i how can i crack this code after that hey let me bring this down i'm on a, i'm running on data guys it's already showing that i'm using too much data let me see if i can go on wi-fi Once you get all your lettering and and all that done, then you, you're able to work on your line work. And remember, all this is dagger stroke. All this is dagger stroke. Double ended dagger stroke. You know, see that those puffy lines, and then you got the shading. I I I think I I wanna I wanna start going to automotive because I think um I've done a couple of things but not you know what I mean. And man, the pay is way better than shirts, you know. And I need that right now. I need to come up with something to where we all win, you know? No shirts for you. You know what? All right, so you know how you say no shirts for you. How much? Think about it. In order for you to learn... You need to go through a lot of airbrushing, a lot of line work, a lot of shading. And in my opinion, shirts is the best way to practice. I mean, how many how many shadings, how many lines, how many are you going to do in automotive? You know what I mean? The most or most difficult part maybe might be shading and small details. I mean, I don't know how the rest of the people do it, you know, but... If you're not going to do shirts, do it on paper, you know? Um, that'll be probably the cheapest and most inexpensive way. Because you have to do hours and and, and hours of, of um, lines and shading. Hold on one second, guys. <clears throat> yeah, pretty much on the material. It's all based on the material you want to, you want to paint on. Yeah. 
check this out, guys. My brother, my younger brother, he has rolls and rolls of practice. You know? Rolls and rolls of practice. He's not even clear. He's not even close to what I got going on here. You know? I'm not trying to show off or anything like that, but... I'm just trying to show you guys what it takes, how much it takes, you know? It just takes it takes a lot. And if you if you give up right away, if you it, it's all in the mind. If you automatically say, Oh, I can't do it, it's too much, then you're already defeated. You defeated your mind. You know? But if like he's he's doing pretty good. He's not here right now. This is my other brother. <laughs> nah, if you could. Yeah, so. <clears throat> Expand the dagger stroke. Yeah, I already did. Expand the dagger stroke. Dagger stroke? Well, actually, it didn't really. The dagger stroke is pretty much a dot. See that? You grow that little dot. And you move. And at the same time, see that, how can I explain it? The, the dagger stroke is pretty much pulling back on this. See that? And when when you're moving, you start closing the valve. Because this is pretty much a valve, this needle. I don't know if you guys can see it. See that? That needle, there's a cone in here. And it creates a, like a valve effect. If you open it up, if you see how the needle goes in? That means the paint comes out. But if you go forward, it closes the the valve with the needle. And um, well, that's pretty much what you're doing here. You're you're making the dot, and you're moving at the same time and closing it. And as you close it, it creates a taper, a fine taper, depending on how how uh, how much movement you had. And how slow it creates the taper. You start closing the valve. I don't know if it if it makes sense. <laughs> Weeks. Yeah, man, it's gonna take a while. But you know what? Anything's possible. You know. Anything's possible, and it, and it starts getting fun. Because you start seeing growth, little by little. If You got to set your mind to not believing you're going to know how to do it in the next couple of months. Months, You know? I don't know where I heard this, but but I heard that um, air, airbrushing is like, like, um, like set of walls. Those walls are not for you to... Uh, to break easily through them, but to stop everybody from crossing them. Something like that. I don't know if it makes sense. You know what I mean? You whip, you whip the brush at the end. Kind of like that. As a matter of fact, people think it's like a pen where you're writing and you go, right? It doesn't work that way. As a matter of fact, I'm, I advise you guys. If you want to learn the dagger stroke, you go super slow. Super slow because like that you'll know exactly how it works. See that? Watch. Let me stretch this dagger stroke as much, as much as possible. See that? No whipping it needed. It's all in your finger and in the motion. You just got to know how to time it. It's all about control. Yeah, control and timing. <clears throat> Is there a certain di like thickness that the dagger stroke can be? Or it could be any size? No, it could be the dagger stroke. It could be any size. Well, there's there's this, uh, these dagger strokes that are fat, right? They used to call those cattails, right? And these are also, you know... You need to learn how to do stuff like this. But 
you can control the dagger stroke. You have little tiny dagger strokes. See that? The smallest of the dagger strokes. You can have the big ones, thick ones. So no matter no matter what, no matter what like, as long as you get the dagger stroke, you can make any size. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you, uh, uh, no matter how, it's all practice. Like, like you gotta uh, adjust. Your brain has to adjust to any dagger stroke. Mm -hmm. You know so, what I mean? It's all based on the mechanics. Yeah, yeah, pretty much mechanics and timing. Your brain has to adjust. Cause just cause you know how to do this, you won't be able to do. It's, you're gonna start all over. It's like starting all over. You gotta practice that little tiny dagger stroke to your <clears throat> muscle memory. So it's pretty, used pretty to much fitting the gun and timing. Yeah, pretty much it. I don't know if it makes sense to you guys, but I think uh, <laughs> I think we're gonna wrap it up. What do you guys think? You guys Dang, have any I questions? Saw do that. That was dagger strokes. I saw there. a dude do a tiger. <whistles> yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I don't have the patience for that, man. You know? Every single little hair. And you can't mess up because if you do, you know, you pull back a little bit too much, and boom, you create one of those. And and there's there's airbrush art. There's airbrushes that have adjustment, uh, like an adjustment where you can't make that mistake. You know what I mean? But I don't, I don't, yeah, I think I have one. But I haven't pushed myself to... So something like that. You know what I mean? A, a, a tiger stroke will be kind of like the tiniest of tiniest. You know what I mean? I think it's more than a thousand, to be honest. I mean, and they only have to be a certain dis a thickness, because then it'll be all blotchy and it just won't look good. See that? Like little minnows or. Micro? Yeah. Micro. I don't know why I call them fishes for some reason in my mind. But, um, but yeah. Mm, what else can I, what else can I teach you guys? See these right here? You could put that little light, uh, shadow. Drop, it's called a drop shadow. It's like lightly pulling back. What water are you using and what compressor? I water, I'm using a water HPBCS. Um, and compressor, I'm pretty much, I'm just using a cobalt silent or quiet compressor. Uh, you just want a compressor that, that can give you at least 30 P continuously PSI. You know what I mean? You don't want nothing that, that will heat up. You know what I mean? Consistent. Yeah, be consistent or something with a tank, you know. Try to stay away from the silent compressors, the studio compressors. You're going to heat those up quick. Uh, and maybe something that doesn't make too much noise. You know what I mean? California compressors make some really good compressors. And um, they're pretty, they're kind of silent, not 100%, but I mean, for, it, it, I mean, for what they offer them for, it's a pretty good deal, you know. My talent has not. That's what I have. <clears throat> talent. That's uh. Pache makes that. The talent. Yeah. Yeah, I heard it's a really good airbrush. Yeah. Made in America. These are made in Japan. I mean, the Badger, the company Badger makes pretty good airbrushes. Um, what else? Um, I think for starters, for beginners. Hmm. I recommend Pache because the parts are cheaper. Badger, when cleaning, you're gonna end up um, you're gonna end up taking out the needle pack that's inside. That's what happened to me when I first started. You know, I was cleaning the heck out of it, and I took something out that ain't supposed to come out. And you're supposed to send it in to Badger to, to put it in. Like and calibrated was, or what? No, it's uh, it's like a little uh, Teflon piece inside that. Prevents air air leakage inside. Oh, it's like a seat. Yeah, like a seat, like a little seal. And um, I wasn't gonna go through that, so I I stuck with my Pache, the VL for the VL. Uh, number three. Good practice brush just to do dagger strokes. 
once you're ready or you have the money buy a HPVC uh, uh, S uh, the, the nozzles the tips are a little bit more expensive but you started with Peche didn't you? yeah I started Peche um, and I spent a, I, sp I bought a lot of tips and needles because you, you easily can drop this thing you know I recommend you have a carpet or something that can cushion cushion the, the drop the drop it will save you a lot of money you know um what else? I have the Eclipse. Yeah, that's, that's nice. That's a nice gun right there. You can do all kinds of stuff with that thing. Hoses, when it comes to hose, and a, and a female I'm connect. I'm showing the Quick Connect. Yeah, female connect. These are made by Iwata. They're crappy. I'm sorry to have to say that. But this is the only part that Iwata has that it's crappy. You know? They leak. They're, I mean, they're about 17 bucks. But I recommend you get a German one. It's called Grex. And, um, man, one hose. And you put one of these milk connects on all your airbrushes. Man, it's going to save you save you a lot of money. And a lot of hassle with, you know, messing with hoses. Jars are Iwata. Makes, Iwata makes them. You know, they're all plastic. I think they're pretty cool. You know. But yeah, you need that practice, 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 and then, and then you can shoot for automotive. You know. Oh, four clips is nice. What what stage are you on? Um, at Rude. Are you are you a beginner? Or are you doing T-shirts already? Or automotive? Yeah, it's a female, female connect. Yeah, she's a little naughty. Oh, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Messing around. But look. Oops. Beginner sort of? Okay, cool. You guys got an Instagram? Yeah, it's very got compressor to print big, to paint big panels. Yeah, man. Um. Those flames you did are, are awesome. I want to get more into that, but I just cannot afford the paint. You know? I try to get some automotive paint. <laughs> Beginner sort of, huh? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, guys, I don't know what else to airbrush, but um, maybe next time I'm airbrushing... I'll do a portrait or I do a cartoon character or something like that on the shirt. Uh, I know you, some of you guys want to see more automotive. Um, like I say, I kind of know how to do it, but it takes a lot of a lot of work, a lot of preparation, like stenciling and, and masking and all that good stuff. And um, maybe some, later on, you know. All right. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up. <laughs> hey, listen. I'm, I think I'm going to wrap it up and call it a night. Oh, no way. Oh, then you know what? Man. What you need to do is pinstripe it. Do the pinstripe, you know, do the, do the shading with the airbrush. Like I said, lightly practice on the side. Don't be, don't be, don't be uh tight with your paint. Practice, practice. I'm not saying you are, but I'm just saying I know some people that are just they don't want to waste it. I'm like, dude, just practice. It's gonna pay off. It's all an investment. And um, and then pinstripe it. I got a couple of pinstriping brushes. I don't know very. I don't know how to. Oh, yeah, the Micron, man. I got about three of them suckers, you know. But I messed up all the needles on them. I got to sharp. I'm a, I got to figure out how to sharpen them myself because I am not going to spend. I don't think I think they cost like, what, 18 bucks, 20 bucks a piece. Yeah, the Micron is nice. The Eclipse HPC is small.
can the okay the Eclipse HPCS um I believe so I believe so because I have the C CS and you know how it comes with a smaller needle and a, a nozzle I'm pretty sure I could switch it up and put it in here oh nice yeah, I have a, I have a couple of pinch wrapping brushes myself, but I haven't touched them in a, in a while. I was I was Oh, okay. What are you telling me? Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I I haven't had the need to use it or do it or switch it. As a matter of fact, uh, my HPCS is um I switch. I take. I take out the nozzles and put the Eclipse, the BCS nozzles in them in the needles. I just feel like uh, when using these uh, um, acrylic paints, they're a little bit too thick for that type of nozzle. You know. Maybe by maybe if I use automotive, they're a lot thinner. E exactly. It really does. Yeah. But um Yeah, man. Man, I wish I, I wish I'd show you guys more stuff, but I I ran out of ideas. I'm located in uh Bakersfield, California. Near uh Craig Fraser. You know who Craig Fraser is? Um, who else airbrushes here? Uh, K Daddy Customs. You guys ever heard of him? Who else? There's a couple of airbrush artists that are from the area. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of them. Oh, yeah, California. Yeah. Okay, guys. All right, guys. Well, have a good night. Talk to you guys later if you guys want to message me. Yeah, Andrew Syndicate, exactly. Um, inbox me on my um, Instagram. Message me if you guys have any more questions. I could just chill while I'm laying down and maybe reply to some of your questions. You know those guys, for reals? You're welcome, man. You're welcome, Blue Dog. All right, my, my peeps. Take care. Peace. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Next lesson will be about something else. I don't know. We got to figure it out. You guys you guys have... Oh, yeah. Um, clean. Jason wants to know how to clean the air guns or the airbrushes. We might do that again. Okay, not personally. Okay. Awesome. All right, my peace. Take care. Good night.